All right. Welcome back to the Pulse with Willie and Al. How's it going today, bro? Man, doing well, doing well. Uh, I was sick over the weekend, but we're feeling better now. You know, can't can't beat it. Yeah, man. There's nothing like feeling better after you've been sick. Uh, that's not yeah. a fun thing to have to endure for anybody. But um, we are back today with our 40th episode of The Pulse, which is crazy, man. So uh, a little bit of a celebration. We've hung 40 on them, which is kind of nice. Uh, so... I, as I was thinking of a title for this episode, I was like, man, what are we going to name it? This and that. Um, but I decided 40 does it on its own. And I, I, I was almost getting ideas like, of, Ooh, you know what? This is 40. This that's is 40. Thing. Yeah, this is yeah. 40, right? I feel yeah. like that's that's going to be true. The as show, I The show is over the hill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I just, uh, I, I was getting images in my head of, the guy from Denver, the huge center that they have in the NBA, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. where he was like, oh, man, I'm blanking on his name. But <laughs> he was saying that uh, he was talking about guys playing defense on him and stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, I got him on this. And he turns around and he's like, bro, I put up 40. Like, <laughs> you're not guarding me, dude. You don't got me. I've been doing this all day. So, real. yeah, anyhow, so uh, let's jump into things. But uh, actually, before we do that, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Make sure you like that video uh, so we can keep bringing you that Major League Baseball and that NFL content that you guys love. Uh, again, just glad to be back. It's it's good to see you again, man. I feel like it's, you know, we took a little bit of time off there for a little bit, had a couple things come up a few weeks, but it's nice to get back on the reg with you and, and seeing you every week. So, um, I agree. Yeah, man. So let's uh, let's jump into some things real quick uh, that were brought to my attention. Some not so fun things that we have to mention, right? Um, you know, Al and I like to have a lot of fun on here, but sometimes responsibility needs to be taken. And sure. there are times that we sometimes make mistakes and we say stuff that maybe we shouldn't have. Um, so it was brought to my attention by a viewer that Sandy Koufax did not pitch a doubleheader. Um, and, uh, so I guess I was wrong about that. However, uh, Juan Marichal did pitch 16 innings in a row and Warren Spahn pitched 15 and a third innings. And, uh, there's another guy also Wilbur Wood, who was a knuckleballer, knuckleballer for the White Sox. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that brought, I was brought to my attention as well that he actually pitched a double header. So, um, very interesting to, to hear that stuff, but guys, that's why we do this is because, you know, we're having fun. If, if we're saying something that's wrong, bring it to our attention. Let us know. Um, this fan in particular, uh, is, is quite special, um, because they also, uh, had, had some words of wisdom for you, um, <laughs> in that, uh, yeah. they were, they were kind of upset with you. Um, uh, they, they've got an ax to grind with you because, uh, you've been talking a lot about baseball the last couple of weeks. However, you sure. have failed to mention um, that the Tigers have some great young pitchers in their staff. <laughs> so... I, was like, I, I was like, maybe this is Big Ray. And then you were like, the Detroit Tigers are like, no, no, it's Big Ray. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, he's always yeah. going to put me in my place. When it comes to baseball knowledge, he knows way more than I do. So I uh, really appreciate him reaching out, letting me know, hey, you can't be spouting this out there and it's not true. Uh, but, um, you know, very, honestly, yeah. Honestly, real quick with the Tigers, like, you know, they're not bad this year, you know, and they're going to be better than the White Sox, which are a, and we'll talk about them when we talk about MLB stuff today. They are a dumpster fire of a team and man. Will the Tigers wait. be better than the Red Sox though? That's the question. Oh, probably. Okay. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Not better yeah. than the Yankees right now. I know that, but. Look, man, we we're, the Sox are thirteen and ten right now, going into almost the beginning of May. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. Man. You expected like, three and <laughs> three and twenty at this point. So I mean, the White Sox are three and nineteen. So yeah, like, that's that's rough, man. Like that's just yeah. Who I mean, they are professionals, yeah. but it's tough to go through something like that. It's are uh, they? Are they professionals? Yeah, it's just that's just a tough thing to go through, man. Right, like real tough. They're, it's okay. So they're they're twenty two games into the season. Mm -hmm. They already have a negative seventy eight run differential. Yeah, that's insane. Like you have to be real bad. Like, so God bless them. God bless them. <laughs> well, 
Uh, so let's, it's a good segue into baseball, right? So let's, let's talk about some of the stuff that's going on that you've seen. Um, I know, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it and stuff, but I, I'm, I have been paying attention to my Braves. I know they're, they're acting Dude, as if, Azuna, man. yeah, Azuna's been, been killing it for them, but they're, they're almost pretending as if they didn't lose their, their best pitcher on their staff and still going out yeah. and winning games. Um, but the top of that division is tough right now, man. The Mets aren't far behind. The Phillies are right on their tail. Like it's, it's a, uh, it's going to be competitive in, in the NL, uh, at, at least after the first month, it looks that way. So now anything can happen, but, uh, I'm just, I'm hoping the Braves can continue to, to put runs up, get good pitching and, and be able to move forward from there. But, uh, honestly, and, Honestly, the Phillies are kind of doing it in reverse this year. Usually, they start on April being fucking awful, and they've won seven in a row. Yeah, like, yeah. Like they're, you know, they're pitching great this year. They're hitting well. Like they're they're the team that you we've seen the last two years in October. Yeah, and I think they're going to be there at the end, kicking it with Atlanta again. Like, yeah. I, I, really, that's the only team you have to worry about in this division respectfully yeah just in the division but outside of that i mean the dodgers are looking good it, it's just I, I don't know there's there's a lot of teams that kind of scare me uh yeah and i think deep down i think milwaukee is getting more savvy uh i don't know if that's really going to end up playing its its part this year but uh they are getting bolder each season i i definitely feel that so um yeah. i don't know we will we will see <laughs> But yeah, um, things that I can hang my hat on with the Red Sox this year. Um, we have the starter named Cutter Crawford mm -hmm. has an ERA of 0.66. And you're wondering, boy, he must have a record of five and oh. No, he doesn't. He has a record of one and oh. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's really tough. Uh, <laughs> yeah, getting yeah. tons of run support, just tons and tons of run support. So, <laughs> yeah um yeah no it's it's good times it's um you know that's that's kind of really the highlight of the red sox season so far mm -hmm. um things that uh will shock no one um otani is is seamlessly transitioned into his first season as a dodger uh currently hitting 368 leading the league uh not much to really say about that yeah he's oh yeah it. also he has a teammate in mookie betts who's hitting 355 and they hit one two in that lineup so Good luck. <laughs> I I will say this though: the Dodgers' pitching has been suspect this year. Well, it's a good thing they've they can put up runs, right? <laughs> well, they've lost seven of ten, and Glasnow has been decent for them. Glasnow has actually been really good for them, but other than that, it's kind of a crapshoot. Yamamoto has been—he's eh, not what you would have hoped for for 324 million dollars no that's um, a lot of money to pay somebody and and not get the pro you know the the progress so far but uh is that something you think he can turn it around or is it is it something that's just not that's headed in the wrong direction and it's like a freight train no i i think that he has he has all the stuff like i watched him pitch in the world baseball classic like he pitched against major leaguers and absolutely dominated them. So it, it's not a question of if he has the stuff, I think it's making the transition. Mm -hmm. I think historically Japanese pitchers have had a hard time transitioning into the majors. Um, and, and that first season's especially always been kind of rough. Uh, Hideo Nomo actually being the kind of exception to that rule, really. He was um, unbelievable, man. Like I yeah, remember like, when he came in the league, it was like ridiculous to watch him. He was so good. Yeah, one rookie of the year, 95 of the Dodgers. Like, it, yeah, the dude was good. But, like, I think he'll turn it around. I think, mm -hmm. unfortunately, he plays in Los Angeles, which is a huge market. Yeah. He has that huge contract. So there's a lot of expectations. But uh, I think he'll turn it around. Yeah. That's what we're hoping for. So, yeah. uh, well, I mean, it doesn't matter to me if he turns it around. I, it's actually better if he doesn't uh, for my Braves. But <laughs> that's okay. I, I want to see the guy succeed uh, and experience some success. But um anything else you've seen in baseball that you wanted to to talk about um this is kind of a a repeat of last year but and you're gonna get a we're gonna get a full season of it this year but if you're gonna watch one player um it's a guy in the cincinnati reds his name is uh ellie de la cruz yeah. they called him up last year and he essentially that first half of the season like just took the league by storm kind of cooled off a little bit in the second half 
but you're going to get a full season of him this year, and he's already leading the league in stolen bases. The dude is the dude is gold glove caliber at short. Uh, the Reds, like, they're kind of a weird young team, but like, they're kind of fun to watch night to night. Yeah, isn't he like seven foot two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's tall for a shortstop yeah like, real tall really and he's tall. he's a crazy good player like w- when you watch him yeah. it's like man he's he's just he's he's a stud uh, a lot of fun to watch him so i'll uh make sure if you if you guys are tuning in make sure you're looking at him uh definitely a fun guy to be able to to watch play the game anything else you want to cover uh no th- the astros are bad this year oh and the white <laughs> Sox are historically bad so yeah 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 I, I was actually reading a stat that in the last 106 years, the White Sox have won one, uh, have won once in the playoffs. And it was the year they won the World Series in 05. They haven't won a playoff series before or since. Oh, so, my goodness. Yeah. Talk about a drought. Like, that's, that does not feel good at all. Yeah. Not great. Not great. So The yeah, big, the uh, big yeah, hurt yeah. is hurting hearing that. Yeah, be honestly be on the lookout for the White Sox. They have a chance to uh to lose more than 120 games this year, and that's you know something I'm always actively rooting for. So there's hope. There's hope. Oh man. Well uh okay, so we'll move on here. We've got some stuff going on with the NFL draft uh coming up this week. So uh getting real excited for that. Things gearing up, a lot of rumors coming through. Um I, I just wanted to ask you, you know, I I, I know from what they're saying in terms of uh, talk right now, it seems like the top three positions are pretty much locked. Like those guys are going to be drafting quarterbacks. We don't know the order yet. We're guessing it's, it's going to be obviously Caleb Williams at one. Uh, and then, you know, what Washington decides to do there uh, at, at two, whether it's going to be Drake yeah. may or Jaden Daniels. So uh, I think the smart pick is Jaden Daniels, but Again, like, you know, they had those those rumors with uh, the bad visit with him, right? Like, things did not go well. He came out of that saying, I want to play for the Patriots. Like, that didn't sound too good. Maybe they've mended the fence. I, I don't know. Speaking of the Patriots, I read this weekend that uh, they are now fielding talks on trading the third pick. And that, and that their GM isn't the one in charge of this. It's Jonathan Kraft. So... Oh man. So, uh we, we This is one thing check I will in. say. Yeah. Go ahead. As as your friend, you need I honestly just kind of check in with me Friday morning. Yep. I if will. We've traded that pick. Like just make sure that I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like like yeah. Just, just make sure that I like haven't like talked about jumped off a ledge because yeah. It's it could be another year of you guys trading back. I know the the rumors are there that you guys are going to go after May. Uh, But I will say that there are other guys at at the quarterback position that I don't think they're rated as highly as him, but I think they could produce better than he could uh, at at the pro level. Um, Bo Nix is one of them. Michael Penix Jr., like uh, another one. I I love Bo Nix. I watched a ton of that dude in college, Mm -hmm. and I – I think that he's going to, his skills are going to translate well, but I think he's going to be like a fourth round pick and Michael Penix. I don't trust because that man has no knees. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> he doesn't. <laughs> no knees. What, what do you mean no by knees. that? Uh, he, I think he's torn like both ACLs. Oh, uh, okay. Ah, like, uh, okay. Like that yeah. man's knees are shredded already. Yeah. And he's like 22. That's yeah. not great. Yeah, it doesn't feel good, but the guy is a player, right? Like, and and he's done yeah. he's done very well at the college level. Uh, he did have some good weapons with him at Washington, but uh, we'll see what ends up happening and how that kind of translates when you know we see who ends up picking him. Um, w- one thing I did want to mention, and I know like we we share videos often on Instagram, uh, but we came across a really good video, and I know we kind of commented on that. I think it was what you commented on um, was. Arizona's GM last year and kind of the talks that he was fielding in terms of being able to trade away that pick and also move, move back down and move back up and all of, all of it. it, It's almost like he's a master Tetris player mixed with chess, like hearing him and and, and an expert negotiator, right? Like 
<laughs> I hate to give that an equation, but it's almost like he's negotiating hostages. He was so good and efficient on the phone, being able to seamlessly go through and trade picks. I don't think I encourage people to go and check it out if, if they have a chance to, because I don't think as a fan, you don't really realize what goes on in those rooms. And now thanks to social media, thanks to all the filming, all of that stuff, we get a, a sneak peek into that. Um, I feel like the only notable thing that we've heard about in uh, going on in war rooms was Mike Rabel's face after they traded away AJ Brown, right? Like seeing that a few yeah. years ago, but this was an unbelievable conversation, uh, multiple conversations he had on the phone of being able to trade away that pick to Houston, allow Houston to be able to move up. They move back, recoup more. He's talking to Vegas. He's talking to Detroit, trying to figure out like, okay, if I move this here, okay, show me those picks for Detroit again. Show me Vegas. Okay. This is what we're going to do. This is how we're moving from there. And it's just unbelievable to watch. It's it's a masterclass in how to be a GM in, in the NFL. Um, and I really think there, even though Arizona was not that good last year, it takes a few years of making moves like that to see the the upside to it, right? Like they, they need, yeah. they're trying to build a culture, build a program it's not, uh, and I know Jonathan Gannon came across as kind of corny sometimes with the way he was talking to players, but he's trying to build a culture and it seems like he's been pretty successful in doing that. I'm excited to see what they can do this year. Yeah. And I think too, when Arizona made that trade last year, I've got to imagine they didn't think Houston was going to be as good as they were. I really thought that they thought they were going to get two picks in the top 10. Yeah, uh, d definitely. Um, yeah, but. <laughs> That being said, like, I, I really, Arizona at four is one of the, the teams I find the most fascinating because mm -hmm. I I think they're going to take Harrison. I, I've got to imagine that's what they're going to take. Um, I think they need other weapons, but, like, if you have a shot at a, a, a generational talent like Marvin Harrison Jr., you got to take it, man. Uh, think you about it. Sometimes you got to take the best player on the board. But think about this for a second. If Minnesota is able to trade up, right? Like, because they have their eyes supposedly on J.J. McCarthy, right? Say Arizona yeah. drops down a few spots, right? Minnesota's at what, eight, nine, I, I think they're at? Uh, yeah, I think they're at nine. Nine, yep. Yeah. So even if they move down, like, don't tell me that they're not going to be able to get a top flight receiver there at Sorry, some they're point. at 11. So uh, 11. 11, okay, the Bears all right. Are at nine. Yeah, so the Bears are at nine. Maybe, maybe Arizona trades back. You know, they get the draft capital from minnesota then they use some of that and parlay it into right because they're going to get more than just a one the 11th pick they're going to get a couple picks out of that probably a first next year and a second this year or something of, of that combination right they can parlay those picks into maybe atlanta who there's rumors that atlanta wants to trade back right and they'd be able to get a, get a playmaker there right their their receiver yeah. that they want whether it's Roma Odunze, like maybe Harrison slips. I, I don't see that happening, but maybe they they know that John Harbaugh is going to be taking a, you know, all at five, right? Like, I, I don't yeah. know. Like, it, it just, it's crazy to see the bricks fall and not know what to expect. And this is kind of what Bill Belichick was talking about when he came on Pat McAfee. And they, he was saying like, you have an idea of what people are doing an idea of what this team might want to do based on previous history, but you don't know for certain what they're going to do. And one point that I really like that he brought up was, you know, they've, they've got the draft boards and stuff. It's funny. I've got mine right up here so I can, I can kind of see where, where I project guys to go and stuff. But he said, every team's got a different, different draft board. None of them look the same. All 32 are different. Because you have yeah. different needs on your team, right? And you you think, oh, maybe there's guys that will slip. Like he had mentioned guys in the past that had slipped, right? Vince Wilfork. He thought there was no way Vince Wilfork was going to be there when they took him. Look at him. He was an unbelievable player for, yeah. for New England for a number of years. Logan Mankins, another guy that was incredible and very, very good for them. Chandler Jones. Like they, they had all these guys that were here. One thing that was interesting was hearing him talk about one of the picks that they traded back for one time, right? So they ended up trading with Baltimore. Uh, so Baltimore traded back into the first round and took New England's pick. 
they ended up taking yeah. Lamar Jackson with that pick. Yeah. And like, it's just, you know, I don't know if Lamar would have fit well in New England at that point, right? Because New England didn't need Lamar at that point. They had Brady, right? And they weren't yeah, even they were in... Still, they were still three years away from being done with Brady. So. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, when you look at that, it's it's just incredible the way it kind of works. So um, I'm really excited. You know, some guys that have been rumored to be on the move, it doesn't seem T. Higgins is going to do that. He's already said, hey, listen, I'm looking forward to playing in Cincinnati next year. But Brandon Ayuk's a name that, you know, has come up, right? Like he yeah. said, Hey, listen, trade me, get me out of here and stuff. So uh, I'd be, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they, maybe San Francisco trades Debo. I, I don't know. I mean, John Lynch is, is smart. He's not a, he's, he's not dumb at what, what he's doing. Uh, he's very crafty, uh, especially can when I, you bring in a guy like Christian McCaffrey, you know, and can I, can I tell you what my, my Christmas wish is? And I don't oh, think it's going to happen. Yeah. Let's but hear like, it. it. This is not, this is non New England Patriots really. Okay. I want to, I want to preface it with that. Okay. That somehow Marvin Harrison Jr. falls to five and the chargers have that pick. Let Justin Herbert have somebody to throw to. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing. Um, it won't happen because I think they'll take a tackle. I think they'll take Joe Alt. I, I do, but yeah, just because Harbaugh cares so much about that. And I, I, I know, listen, I understand college football is not the same as the pros, but some of those philosophies stay And Harbaugh did not have many guys that were in, in terms of big name receivers, like five-star recruits at receiver in Michigan. He yeah. did have some guys that were big, big star recruits on the line. And that's why yeah. they were so good. He understands the importance of having a great offensive line. And I think you, that's the first thing they have to do for for Herbert, right? Maybe they trade back up and try to get back into the first round and, and grab a receiver that falls. I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I really yeah. don't. Um, I could see Buffalo taking a shot. Imagine Buffalo trades up and tries to get him. Christmas. That's, that's wanna, my nightmare scenario. That's you, my nightmare yeah. scenario. I can't have that. I you want to talk about that. a Christmas list? Yeah. I'd love, love, love for Indy to trade up and, and snag him. I don't I'd know. If, I don't know I if it's going to happen, but I would love for that to happen and, and see him. I'd love to see him wearing the horseshoe, man. Did it the would, Colts trade up last year to get Richardson? Am, am I imagining that, or were they? Did they just take him at four because they were they were picking? Him I think four. they were there. I think they were okay. there and okay. don't believe they traded up. Yeah. Cause they have their first pick first round pick this year. Yeah. Which yep. makes sense. And they're picking at 15. So yeah. Okay. I, now I don't, they're going to have to move up if they want Harrison. Right. Because this is what? my, this is my thing. I think if he, if he goes to six, right. I see Indy making a move on him. I definitely. Well, do. I was gonna say, you're a Colts fan. What's like? What do you want to happen in this? Like, when this draft is all said and done, what do you want Indianapolis to have? Fixed? I hope they. Okay, so this is um, more than receiver. What they really need, because they had Josh Downs last year. Now he's not a number one, but he's a good no. slot guy. Uh, oh, man, Michael Pittman Jr. He, listen. He produced that last year. They gave him, I don't he, understand. He produced last it. year, and um, I just, <laughs> I just listen. I, I look at number ones in the league, and I just don't think he's even in the top twenty. I, I just oh, don't. I, I agree. Um, but he's good for their system. Indy's not really a throw the ball all over the place type of team. They're run the ball, dominate the line of scrimmage and give Jonathan Taylor the rock. What they really need. And this showed big last year was they don't have a lockdown corner. And I, I think they got to yeah. go for one. Like who do I got them picking here? Oh, I actually, <laughs> I actually have them trading up. <laughs> <laughs> to get Harrison. I don't, I don't no, think, I love it. I listen, love it. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I, I'd love for that to happen. But really I see them going after a corner, right? Like it, they kind of have to, um, yeah. just because yeah. they, they need a lockdown corner. And in this league, it's imperative that you have that. 
I think they go corner in the first round if they don't trade up for Harrison. And then later in the second, third, fourth round, maybe they get another corner, but uh, then you can address wide receiver. It's very deep in this class. Um, I just... I don't know, man. I look around the league. They have a an all-star running back. They don't have an all-star receiver to match with that. Like, I look at other teams like Philly, man. They've got Saquon there. They've got A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith, right? And Dallas Goddard at tight end, right? Like, Goddard's not a world beater, but he's pretty dang good when he's not, when he's not hurt. But A.J. Brown's no. a bona fide number one. Devonta Smith was a number one before, you know, the, the A.J. Brown showed up. And both of them went over a thousand yards again last year, right? Like granted they had another game to do it, but like, you know, I just look around the league and I see marquee pieces and I don't see Pittman as that. I think no. if they bring in a really solid number one next to him, he's, it's going to help him get better too. I, I really exactly. think so. Yeah. Um, I those are real quick the, the thing you said about the Colts in your corner. That was kind of the thing with the Colts last year. Great story, but you could always throw on that team. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> you could. Like, you couldn't necessarily run it on them, but you could get yards in the air on them. Well, they got easy. Buckner up front. It's very difficult to do yeah. that, right? Um, yeah. I just, man, I, I like, I really hope that they have a good draft. They need it. Um, I look Honestly, around. I'd the, love to see them get a tight end, too. Yeah. Like a solid tight end. Uh, dude, it, Tell me if if they stay put at fifteen, and Brock Powers, man, yeah, like Ooh. that could be an unbelievable playmaker for them. But yeah, the rumors that I've heard is that he's going to go to the Jets. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that would give Aaron Rodgers a ridiculous playmaker at tight end. Um, not a Gronk player, right? But no. Gronk esque. I mean, he's he's very well, very Powers good. Also coming off surgery too. Yep. That's the thing. So like he I don't think he's gonna start the year healthy. Like I think it's he's not gonna be available till like I would say like week four, week five, probably or something like that. Right. So yeah. I don't know. I'm just hoping that they, they end up making a a splash in not only the draft, but also taking a look at some of these guys in free agency too. Maybe they can bring in some veterans that are, are gonna really help them on defense as well. Um yeah. but that that would kind of be my hope. We'll see. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to have to change up my chart because I had Denver going after Bo Nix, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen now with, with Zach Wilson, um, <laughs> which is sad. Uh, l- listen, I'm, I'm happy for him because they, he's out of New York now. Right. Um, not happy for the way it happened. Not happy that he went to Denver. Um, I, I just, it's a head scratching move. For me, um, it's almost like <laughs> the Jets had to pay to get rid of him. Now, granted, they recouped a pick, right? So as you look at it, like the Jets, they sent Wilson and a seventh rounder, which was the 253rd pick this year uh, for the sixth rounder, uh, which is the 203rd pick. So they move up 50 yeah. picks, right? Um, which is good for them, but... They also, Denver also decides like, hey, that that's not enough. Let us also split the cap hit. Which Yeah, it's like, hey, man, they were already going to take him off your hands. Like, they're already paying Russell Wilson. Like, yeah. dude, like, what is this? I, I just, I don't understand that. But that's what happens when you have, what is it? Like, oh, Walmart <laughs> that owns that owns the Broncos, right? Yeah. So, like that's uh, they, money's not an option or uh, not an uh, you know money is not an object for them they they just don't care it, it's they'll spend as can, much as they need to can we can we quickly i just real quick mm-hmm. the denver broncos depth chart for quarterback as it stands today <laughs> jared stidham your qb1 would be jared stidham yep okay uh, your qb2 would be zach wilson yeah and baby your qb3 would be ben denucci yeah, I um He was decent for Dallas. He was decent for them. It's it does not feel good at all. No. Um no. I wish Manning hadn't gone there. It made me it made me cheer for them, and now I feel terrible doing that. And I feel like every team in that division is going to get better. Uh yeah. 
except for them. Um, they, dude, they and again, like I, I, I do it on my own, my own team analysis and stuff. But like, they didn't even bring back Justin Simmons, right? Like, you got rid of no. both leaders, like Russell Wilson. That people can make fun of him, but he was not the problem last year. They made it seem like he was the problem, and shipped him out of town. And good for him that he, you know, avoided that and was able to get out. Um, and hopefully he he does well in Pittsburgh, where he's only going to be asked to hand the ball off and make a few decisions that he needs to make. Um, but they they got rid of both of their leaders, and that like really irks me. Um, yeah, Sertan's the only leader they really kind of have left. Yeah, he's super young too. Like that's yeah, that's the other piece of it. I just I don't know, man. I feel like Free he's Patrick Sertan. Yeah, Free I feel him. yeah feel like he's trapped there and he's a he's a great corner he's a top five corner in the nfl um yeah i don't know man so but uh yeah uh question for you are you sure. looking forward to belichick uh kind of commentating the draft i'm ready for it yeah. i i think he's gonna provide if i think if anything that mcafee interview told me that like and i've kind of always known this a little bit but like he didn't show it often the dude kind of has a sense of humor and he can kind of like when he's on a panel like that he does a really good job of articulating himself and i i want to go back to when the nfl did like i think it was like the 100 greatest players of all time mm -hmm. he was on that like like that that show they did it in like part at episodes and he was always on that like panel yeah and the insight that he provided on that was incredible yeah and it, it, like i learned so many things from him he talks about a story on why he loves ed reed so much yeah yeah I yes like, I, I saw that yeah yeah we're the one where he baits manning into thinking that like he he deliberately blows a play to trap manning into thinking he'll do it again yeah like belichick's the only person i think that would have ever saw that yeah, you, but, you know, the, the thing that I really like about him, and I've I've just realized this as you're talking about it, is, um, and we're kind of getting, like, the dream. Like, Madden players from yesteryear are getting their dream, right? Because, like, part of playing Madden wasn't just playing the game, but I loved franchise mode, right? Doing yeah. the drafts, all of that stuff, scouting players. Now you kind of get, like, a, a bird's-eye view of what he sees in players and we don't often get inside the mind of that right so it's a very interesting thing like even he was given snippets of it the other day on mcafee where uh he was saying that uh you know you only get a certain number of visits right with with players and stuff and you've got to you're not going to bring in guys that you know everything about right you know every, it's because it's yeah. a waste of a visit right if there's a guy you really like, then you got to bring him in. But they use those visits to try to like pair people together. So they'll bring in like a quarterback and some wide receivers and maybe a running back and like see how they work together and like, you know, yeah. ask ask them like, okay, run the play. Like, what was the receiver thinking on that? And they'll bring in the linemen together and understand zone blocking schemes and like, can these guys work well together? And like, it's unbelievable the thought process that goes into that. Which I didn't know until I watched that interview. Yeah. I had no idea that's how visits worked. Yeah. No idea. I thought they just brought in one person at a time. Yep. That's how I always me, thought it worked. Me too. Uh yeah. very, very yeah. interesting, very intriguing. And I I can't wait, man. Like, as a guy that spent many years villainizing uh Belichick, I really I really love his analysis because it's so in depth. It's it's beneath the crust and it's the best part, right? Like you get yeah. to see the the game in a completely different way than, than you did before. Um, and I just like that. There's nothing more gratifying as a learner than developing new understanding, new content. And I, I crave it, man. I really do. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. I cannot wait for Thursday night. And I'm, I, I just, uh, Man, I really, uh, speaking of which, and it just popped into my head, if Indy ends up trading back, right, out of pick 15, uh, they could even take him at 15, but Cooper DeGene, like, I don't think that's a bad pick to make. The guy from Iowa, they've had a history of picking guys from Iowa in the past. Pat Anger, yeah. Bob Sanders, like, 
it could work out. Dallas Clark was another one. Dallas Clark was awesome for them. Man, he yeah. was so good. Um, I would love to see them bring him in. That guy is an he's an elite level playmaker, and he would start day yeah. one for them. Um, oh, for sure. So maybe they take him at fifteen. I don't know. I yeah. think there's I think there's some corners that are pretty good that are rated higher than him. Uh, but I would love it if they did that. Man, that would that would speak to my soul. So yeah. Oh man, anything else you yeah. wanted to mention about the draft before uh, before we wrap up? No, I'm excited for just three days of it and just three days of gloriousness. Yeah. I cannot wait. Dude, I'm going to order cannot kebab wait. every day. I don't God, care. I hope so. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have a good time here. I, I'm going to let my wife know, listen, I, I plan on, on being terrible for three days. Um, no. Don't expect much out of me. <laughs> yeah, you know, she she knows what she's getting. She knows what she signed up for. Yeah, she signed up. She got a raw deal anyway, so um <laughs> but yeah yeah <laughs> so uh moving on so we have actually an interesting trivia question and al i'm gonna have you ask it so i don't butcher it um <laughs> do you you remember what it is yeah so what um and this is a quarterback question since it's being the draft uh who was the last number one pick at quarterback to win a super bowl hmm. yeah now yeah, that's Fun fact, Al usually does all the trivia questions, but this is one that I looked up. And the reason I had him ask it was because specifically it's related to quarterback because he actually proved me wrong in my own trivia question. But this is specifically about quarterback. So uh, go ahead. You could drop the the answer below. Let us know what you think. Um, I know I'll get the feedback from my dad. Bonus too. question. We'll, we'll ask the, the bonus part of this as well. Who was just the last number one overall pick to win a Super Bowl? Oh, okay. Yeah, so now we week. got both. All right. Yeah, that's that's week. how we do it. That's how we do it. Since yeah. it's draft week, right? It's important. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess we'll wrap up, right? Yeah. I want to actually, speaking of trivia real quick, oh, uh, there's a yes. guy that passed away this weekend. Uh, his name was Howie Schwab. And I and I know that name might not resonate with a lot of people, but he uh, he was really ESPN's uh, chief uh, statistician, and he had this trivia show on ESPN called Stump the Schwab. It was hosted by Stuart Scott. It was on every day, I think, at like four thirty. It was right before PTI part and uh, around the horn. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it was a show that like I really gravitated to at eighteen and nineteen years old because. It was a trivia show that I really enjoyed because I really enjoyed trivia. Uh, it was also like really hard trivia. And that guy was like one of the smartest dudes I like had ever had ever watched on TV. And just a big bucket of sad that he uh, that he passed away. But like kind of a big reason why I enjoy trivia and really like doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. That show was awesome, yeah. too. I remember watching it with my dad a few times. I say a few times, but like religiously like we would right and yeah it's the way he was able to prove people wrong and like the stats that he had i i couldn't have even i could have studied for years and not remembered all of the stuff that that he was able to it's just it was unbelievable oh, yeah. man he he was just an absolute genius uh real sad uh but the memory of him is is what will live on for sure yeah so um but uh you don't have to remember us, guys, because we are going to be back again next week. Uh, we'll be bringing yeah. you some some good draft coverage. Uh, next week's episode is going to be exclusively about the draft because I think there's going to be a lot that we're going to have uh, with that. So uh, make sure you guys tune in and catch all of our draft recap that we have. Um, and next week is somebody's birthday. Oh, boy, yeah. I start, I start getting old. I'm, I'm getting close to the hill, man. I'm, I'm right. This guy. I'm cresting almost. So um but listen man i appreciate you saying that uh glad to do another one with you brother i really appreciate it and uh yeah we got 40 so yeah, we made we it to 40 it. we're gonna keep going so next milestone Halfway 50 yeah yeah well listen i love you bro i hope you have a great rest of your week and uh we will be back next week bringing you more coverage guys all right man hey willie i love you stay safe as always peace uh, peace